All right, I want to welcome everybody back to another Wednesday night at Atlanta Street Church of Christ, a church that don't care where you've been, only where you're going. So, but before we get started, let's get a word of prayer in. Dear gracious and Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come and hear another portion of your word. Father, I ask you that your Holy Spirit just come and just be here, that whoever needs to hear what's about to be said tonight, Lord, that they get it with receptive ears. And we just want to say thank you just for who you are and how you've been showing out this week this year, this month, Lord. So we're just going to be grateful and thankful unto you. As we get ready tonight, night, Lord, just bless me to deliver your word as you see fit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. So we've been talking about fruits of the Spirit, and they've been coming out of Galatians 5.22. And now we to patience. Now here's the kicker. Let me read it. So uh, Galatians 5 22 so it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness uh, goodness and faithfulness now it says long suffering now when I start digging into this we always think about long suffering is you gotta <laughs> suffer for a long time but it also translates to patience okay so basically, long suffering means you got to have patience. When it's talking about long suffering with your brothers or whoever, it means you got to have patience with them. Yeah. So my title tonight is, Where is Your Patience? All right. Where is your patience? Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to be in Psalms 46 because I'm going to read about what they, they was writing in Psalms 46 and he was going through this would be a poem and there's going to be a particular verse in there that's going to really sum a lot of things up for us. Okay. Psalms 46, 1. But the definition for when you look at it, it says patience, endurance, consistency, steadfastness, perseverance, forbearance, slowness, and vengeance wrongs. So when we think of patience, we always look at it from a Stand fat, like, okay, I got to be patiently wait on this, and I got to patiently wait on that. But biblical patience is a whole different ballgame. It's a whole different story. And the reason is, being patient is an active thing. It is a characteristic of a godly spirit. So I want you to keep that in mind in that as we go through this. So, just look at those definitions. It says endurance is consistent, steadfast, it's perseverance. All those are action words, meaning that you're doing something. Too many times I feel like we say when we hear patience, and long so we gotta sit there and just be waiting for something to happen. But we don't always have to just wait for something to happen to us to be patient. Okay? So think about David. Let's think about David for a moment before we get to Psalm 46. David had multiple chances to take Saul out. But he always said, you know what? I'm going to wait and I'm going to trust the God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to wait on God because God said he's going to take care of me. He said he's going to be, I don't have to take Saul out. And plus he had reverence because God pointed Saul. So until God removed Saul, David wasn't going to do nothing. God allowed David to remove Saul. So you want to keep that in mind, all right? So let's, so let's read 46, starting in verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried to the midst of the sea, though the waters, though of they roar and, and trouble through the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams, who shall make glad the city? God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. And the heathen rage and the kingdoms were moved and he uttered his voice and the earth melt. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolate he hath made in the earth. He make the wars to cease. Until the ends of the earth, he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spirit asunder, and he burneth the chariot in fire. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. 
The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob, our refuge. Hold on. So, what we, what we got here? We got David very vividly describing who God is. Yeah. Very vividly describing how God does things and how he works. All right, I'm going to be like the more. I got to do some plain English. I like my King, I like my King James, but sometimes you just got to break it down and make it real plain. All right. All right, so watch this. So God is our place, basically refuge is a place of safety. So God's our place of safety. So in him, we're safe. In him, we can have. So think about a, a being in a fortress. You there, you sitting there, you waiting. There's Everything's going on around you. So he's the refuge he's going to take. And the earth may fall apart, which means things may fall Fall apart around you. The mountains may be falling in the middle of the sea. Basically, in a nutshell, David said everything could be going on around you. Be falling down around you. Waters foaming and roaring. Mountains shaking. Yeah. So you're in trouble now. So you're struggling now. So you're going through some stuff now. You lost your job now. So they, think about this. David's out. He ain't in the palace no more. He ain't nowhere. He's out there patiently waiting on God with everything going on around him. Are you patiently waiting on God even though everything's going on around you, falling around? Are you patiently waiting on God? Lord, have mercy. Ask yourself that question. Where is your patience? So God bless. God's blessings are like, the, like a river. Woo. God's blessings are like a river. They fill the city of God with joy. So God's blessings fill you with joy. God, so that, that city of a holy place where the mountain, my, most high God lives, where the most high God lives. Because God is there, the city will not fall. Hold on. Can't miss this. If God is in your life, if Jesus is in your life, what that's telling you is he used a city, but replace that and put in your life, in your heart. How can you fail? How can you fail if God is in your life, if God is in your heart, if God is actually walking with you? Think about that. Yeah. If God is with you, if the word says, greater is he that is in me than is he in the world, that's scripture, that's word. So it means, guess what? I can't fail. I can't fail. So, God will be a help in the beginning of the day. Nations are in disorder, kings will fall, but God speaks and the people of the earth melt in fear. The Lord who rules over all is with us. Meaning, kingdoms going to fall. Things going to go bad, but God is with us. Amen. But are we willing to be patient enough <laughs> for him to do what he do? Are we? So it says the God of Jacob is like a fort to us. God is like a fort. Come see what the Lord has done. See the places that he has destroyed on earth. Make wars stop. Whoa. He can make the wars stop. He can make whatever's going on in your life stop. Oh, yeah. Make an end of the earth and others. Hold on. We need to get this point real quick. We don't own this earth. We don't. We just came in this place with nothing. We're going to leave here with nothing. God owns all this. God owns Calicot 5 here. God is in control of all this. God has got this. So we got to trust and have faith and patience that God's going to work it out. So he stamps every, because how, oh, watch it says. They say for us, says, break every bow. He snaps every spear. He burns every shield with fire. Translation, the spears, the fire, the darts, whatever's coming at you, he going to stamp them out, burn them, and destroy them. Yes. He did, David is telling a story in poem form what God did for him. Uh -huh. 
See, everybody want to look at songs and they think they nice little pretty stories and stuff. But when I read songs, I see a diary of a man who walked with God. Yeah. I see a diary of someone who put his thoughts and feelings on where how God, not what he heard. I always say a lot of times when I when um when I'm testifying and stuff, I tell people what I experienced, not what I heard. I tell people about what God did for me, not what I heard. And that's what, that's what David's doing. David is telling us specifically what God has done for him. He didn't hear about it. He experienced it. Yeah. Why? Because you know, he Saul was after him. His sons was after him at one point in time. They talking about these spears and these swords and these fires. All that stuff got squashed. Yeah. The only time David messed up is when he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. When he got impatient. And wanted something he didn't supposed to have. But whenever he did what he was supposed to, stay patient, he got and God took care of him. So, I will be honored among the nations. I will be honored in the earth. Let God be the one that honor you. David got honored. David got the glory in the earth because he did what God asked him to do. He was called a man after God's own heart. Think about it. If you think David, just the hypothetical, let's just think if David would have took care of this all on his own. Would everything turn out like it did? Think about when you try to do something on your own. And you try to fix it yourself. Yeah. Maybe I'm by myself, so I'm going to raise my hand. I've done that. Try to fix it myself. Yeah. And then when I try to fix it, it didn't work out. If I had just waited one more week or one more day, God would have fixed it. It would have been I wouldn't have to go through all this. The Lord rules over all is with us. Now let's walk back up to verse 10. Because this is where this is where we finna actually walk this and see exactly how patient works in our lives. He said, Be still and know that I am God. All right. All we gotta do is be still. And know that he is God. Amen. Stop worrying about the paintings that men have painted about, painted about Jesus. Stop worrying about that. Stop worrying about who the president is, who doing this, who that. Stop worrying about that. He said, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. Okay, so you say, brother Lee, be still. All right, now while you're being still, this is what you need to be doing. Now, we talked about long suffering. That means you got to be enduring. You got to do some enduring, okay? Once you sit there and you endure and go through some things, then you got to be patient. Now, here's two things that go hand in hand. Faith and patience go hand in hand. How do they go hand in hand? One, you got to have some faith that you're going to get through whatever you're going through. And you got to have the patience to know that God going to get you through whatever it is you're going through. Also, the word says... Faith without works is dead. Yeah. So that means you got to be doing, actively doing something. How I know? Let's see. In Acts, Paul was in prison. He, While he was in prison, he didn't bellyache. He didn't cry. He started singing and praying. Yeah. While he was in prison, he was singing and praying. So guess what happened? Shackles came out, doors opened up. He could have walked out. But God wanted that, that um, jailer to be saved. So that jailer got saved. Because Paul, guess what? what? He wasn't belly aching and crying. He was praying and worshiping. So, here's the thing. He says, when you're getting, get wisdom. Get understanding. What that means? That means while you're waiting on that job promotion, learn everything it is you need to learn about that job. Don't sit there and belly ache because I didn't, oh, why they doing me wrong? Patiently wait for God to get open that door for you. But while you're waiting, you get the knowledge of how to do the job better. While you're waiting for that promotion to come, you still study. Because see, here's the thing. I don't wait till it's time for me to start to speak, to start studying. I'm consistently reading. I'm consistently studying this word. So when God says it's time for me to speak, I'm prepared. 
So when guess what? It's a bad thing to not have, be prepared when God get ready to bless you. So being patient is an active thing. So while you actively waiting on God, being patient on God, you work with him. Okay, it said be patient with your brothers and sisters. How after that? Easy. It don't mean that means like you still speak to them. You still actively pray for them. You still actively talk to them. Because guess what? You never know when that person's gonna change. You don't know when the one thing that you say that day might change. Amen. All you're supposed to do is plant the seed. Right. He just told us to give share the word. He gonna take care of the rest. He just said, be faithful, and he'll take care of the rest. Okay, so now, if you ain't waiting on a job, you waiting on a spouse, guess what? If you waiting on God to bring you that man or that woman, start working on being, think and see yourself as the best wife or the best husband you can possibly be. Visualize that. Pray on that. Develop yourself. Because guess what? Patience comes from the inside. Too many times we say, I was talking about, oh, I'm losing my patience. How are you going to lose your patience if your patience is rested in God? Think about that. You can't, anything given to you from God cannot be taken from you. So therefore, while we being patient, waiting on God to do what he said he going to do, we need to be reading and studying his word, praying, meditating day and night. Till when he get ready to fix what he's going to fix. Him. All right. How I know. Remember I told you. I don't say nothing I don't personally experience. I wanted to have a full-time teacher position last year. God kept putting in roadblocks. After roadblock. After roadblock. And I guess what? I said, you know what, God? I'm going to stop. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait. But while I was waiting, I was still studying. I was still praying. I was still doing everything I do. Then guess what? He opened up doors. Doors that I did not see. Doors that I did not prepare. So therefore, he blessed me with a position that I didn't think, that I didn't know nothing about, but he blessed me with it. Why? Because I was patiently waiting on him and listening to him and doing what he said to do. When we, spiritual patience Means that we're waiting on God, but while we're waiting on God, we're preparing ourselves to receive what He has for us. We're not bickering, we're not being bitter about it. About the situation, we don't even worry about it. We just focus on what God says He's gonna do. If God said He's gonna get you, whatever it is, whatever it is in your life, whatever you've been praying about, if God said He's gonna get it for you, you just gotta walk in faith that He's gonna get it. And then while you're walking in faith, you're gonna get it. Whatever it is, set that goal. I don't like I said, I don't know what it is you're trying to get in life. Somebody's trying to get something. You need to write it down, write the steps, and then have faith that it's gonna come to pass. But while you're doing it, work on it. Work on your relationship. Work on your relationship with God. Amen. Because David had a relationship with God. If you remember, before he became king, he was out with the sheep. Tending the sheep. Because guess what? When they went look for him, guess where he was at? Tending the sheep. Jesus was doing what he was supposed to do. I know. He went to the garden of Gethsemane. And he prayed. And he said, God, this cup passes from me. Let it be. But if not, I'll do your will. He went to the cross. And he died for us. Why? Because he did what he did for 33 years. He patiently walked with the disciples and tried to teach them everything he knew. Even when it was frustrating, like, why you ain't getting it out? Why you don't understand this? He does the same thing with us. He walks with us spiritually every single day if we allow him. Thank you, Jesus. And he will patiently teach us everything we need to know. Why? Because he said, I will send the Holy Spirit and he will teach you all things. But we got to be patient enough and active in our patience to get what we need to get. 
If you don't know who Jesus is in the part of your sins, I suggest you get to know who he is because he hung, bled, and died. And then he rose on the third day for our sins. Not just pink, purple sin, everybody sins. So, while you're being patient, be active, be praying. Ask God to show you what it is you need to be working on. Let's get ready to close. Let's get ready to pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for all these, this open up the window, pouring out a blessing you have done in my life, that I may be able to share who you are firsthand, that I'll be able to continue to do the things that I do. Thank you for blessing Atlanta Street. Thank you for blessing the leadership here that allowed me to do the things that I do. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that someone gets encouraged by this word tonight. And that they may ask the ultimate question, what must I do to be saved? So, Father, I thank you. I'm appreciative of you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.